With dwindling government support and new online competition, the scrutiny on university presidents has never been higher. Stephen Joel Trachtenberg should know. The former George Washington University president's new book, Presidencies Derailed, looks at some 50 college leaders who were pushed out of their jobs. These are competitive times in higher education in a way that we haven't seen in many years. Uh, But these are competitive times in our society in general. And in that environment, Trachtenberg says, there's little tolerance for university officials accused of missteps or not performing to expectation. People are more um, thin-skinned. They're more irritated. And, uh, And so they tend to be more judgmental. Trachtenberg, who last year received an honorary degree from Westfield State, says in the case of Evan Dobell, it appears he may be just a really bad bookkeeper. If he's done what has been alleged, it ought to be repaired, it ought to be fixed, and he ought to be reprimanded. But if not, Trachtenberg says, a negotiated resignation is typically the outcome, an outcome we may soon learn at Westfield State. My next guest spent nearly five years as Secretary of Education overseeing the state's university system. Paul Ravel is now a professor of education policy at Harvard Graduate School of Education. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Emily. Good to be here. So even taking a page out of uh, Stephen Joel Trachtenberg's book, 50 college presidencies since 2009, he had a 19-year run at George Washington. So it used to be that Presidents pretty much stayed as long as they wanted to. So what has happened? Well, I think um, Trachtenberg is right in terms of citing the kinds of competitive pressures that are on schools now. Not only the competition and the uh, the onset of online education, but also increasing demands for accountability, um, people looking for what the appropriate measures are of university success, at the same time as uh, public funding for higher education uh, is getting more and more constrained. So they're struggling, and uh, in this kind of competitive atmosphere, they're, they're under a great deal of pressure, and university boards are under pressure uh, to make their institutions distinctive and to, uh, uh, to attract uh, uh, students in a very competitive environment. Of course, we know that universities are fraught with politics like most businesses, but is this different because a university president really has a lot of people to answer to? I mean, starting with parents Mm -hmm. and then going through the faculty, the board of trustees, and then in case of a state university, it's you're also accountable to the state. So that's that's a lot of layers. There are a lot of layers. You have to keep your eye on the ball as a university president. You do work for the board of trustees because of the long tenure of a lot of presidents or because of the, you know, the exceptional influence and intellect and, and uh, prestige of the presidents. Many of the presidents have a strong relationship with their board. Some have too strong a relationship and too much control of the board. But it starts with the board. But you're right. There are a great many constituencies. And you're highly constrained as a college president. You aren't a CEO in the classic sense of a corporate CEO where you have powers to basically mandate all kinds of changes within your institution, you have a faculty, and the faculty has substantial responsibility in the conduct and key decisions affecting that institution. So it's a, it's a leadership position in which you share power and you govern by consent, and there are a lot of constituencies, as you point out, that you have to take into account. It seems like, though, once you get caught in the crosshairs, you have no chance of surviving because you're going to diminish your fundraising capacities, number one, and the reputation of the school. You look at uh, Spanier from University of Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. He, got, he got swept out during that whole Joe Paterno thing. Larry Summers, Penn State, sorry. Larry Summers didn't really survive Harvard after the controversy about women scholars. I mean, is that true that once you're kind of in the focus. Well, I mean, I mean, I think there's a. This is part of the new accountability in higher education because uh, taxpayers and various watchdog groups are very concerned about how public money is being spent and how, in this case, it's being managed. Uh, the scrutiny is high, and the tolerance for misfeasance or malfeasance, particularly when managing public dollars, I, I think is diminished. And so it heightens the responsibility not just for the presidents but also for the boards that oversee those presidents. Now, in the case of many of these people, I suppose we, we'll never know what the deal is. I mean, my understanding is Evan Nobel is going to try to work out some sort of a settlement deal. But I mean, 
Is that up to the Board of Trustees, or does the state have to pass off on that since it's state dollars as well? Well, no, in this case, it would be up to the board. Um, to the extent that it involves future commitments financially, the state may get involved. I mean, one of the issues in, in these public universities uh, has to do with the level of state oversight and the state's capacity, frankly, for oversight, which is another area in which we've experienced you know, significant cutbacks in funding, so the capacity of the state to oversee the 29 campuses that we have in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is fairly limited. We have, for example, one person at the uh, Board of Higher Education charged with oversight of these campuses mm -hmm. from a financial standpoint. So we've got to invest more in that kind of function if we intend to hold folks accountable for their management of the funds. Not in Doe Bell's case, because he wasn't paid you know, a, a gross salary, but that's also been one of the issues. I mean, we saw with uh, David Sargent at Suffolk that the drumbeat just pounded and pounded, and largely it was over his salary because there was fairly universal agreement that he had done some good things for Suffolk University. So it goes kind of back to my question about once something kind of gets in, you know, the, the fray, it seems like it, 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 it takes off, and, and this certainly did. Well, I mean, there, there is a lot of financial pressure, and I mean, parents and students are feeling enormous pressure. The amount of debt that students are carrying out of our public institutions right now is shocking, really, and it is, is, gets in the way of our concept of having a meritocracy where <laughs> everybody who's capable of going to college can go to college and get a higher education. So when people feel that pressure, and at the same time, they feel like their trust and confidence in, in sort of public management is violated by things that appear to them to be excessive or out of bounds or unfair or inappropriate. And the media tends to focus, I think, properly because they sense the public interest in this. Uh, then the outcry is huge. Mm. It's a highly desirable position. Uh, are there people clamoring for these positions all over the country? They're juggling to, you know, upgrade themselves from university to university. I think there are a lot of competition for for presidencies, but on the other hand, having been involved in, in a number of searches for college presidents, there are many people who have reservations about it because of the factors that we've yeah. described. <laughs> for imagine. example, there's an enormous burden on college presidents to raise funds these days. So, uh, somewhere. Upwards of half of a college president's <clears throat> time, particularly at private institutions, is spent out raising money. Uh, and then, you know, you have some limited powers internally. You've got this tremendous competition. Uh, it doesn't leave much room for professional life or family life uh, if, you're, uh, if you're a typical university faculty member. So not everybody strives for these kinds of positions. All right, Paul Revel, thanks for much coming as always. And I should disclose, as I have a couple other nights, that Evan Dobell happens to be a, a personal friend of mine. Thanks for having me on.